Yeah, okay. Welcome, flower friends. I will tell you how Anko Pure Vanda started. It was 25 years ago and my father was growing roses. Red roses, especially for Valentine, of course. And I got a, I started a collection of orchids like this. You must see very rare kind of flowers. And I slowly fell in love with orchids and not roses. I was collecting all kinds of varieties and I want to make a nice collection and I will show you some. Here you must see, have you ever seen this kind of color combination? I was fascinated about it. And I decided I want to do something with orchids and not with roses. But yeah, you must make money. So I was looking to all kinds of orchids, which would be something special. Is this special? It is special, but I think not commercially interesting. And if there's one thing I don't like, is to do what other people do. So I don't want to grow phalaenopsis. They are very nice, very long lasting, but I want to do something else. And you got 20,000 different botanical varieties of orchids in nature. So I think there must be something really special for me. So I was looking, I went to Thailand and I was collecting all kinds of orchids. It's small, Cattleya. I like Cattleya, it's, it's, it's nice, but the plant is only flowering once a year. I think not special enough for me. This kind of, we call it Venus schoen, Spaphiopedilum. It's really beautiful, but one flower. It's too little, but it's special. And you got all kinds of green, white. This one, this one is nice to tell. This one gives a flower, and after this one, uh, has been flowering for four weeks, you get another one and another one and another one. It's very nice, but how to tell people that it keeps on flowering? It's almost impossible. So this will never be really success. Very lovely one, also one flower. This is a Sulegina. This one you must grow cold, white, with, with yellow. It was, was one of my favorites, but still not the one. Small Phalaenopsis, you see them everywhere. Dendrogilum. Some are perfuming, this not. I will take you farther into the jungle. This is really how it started. Eh? The, in, I got a jungle like this 25 years ago and every day I was between my orchids. And have you ever seen green orchids? Yeah, it's, it's amazing that it exists. I could, I could walk here every day for hours. Even after work, I was between my orchids. So, but I got a glass house full of roses and I want to do something special. And that's not roses. So, this dendrobium, for example, with the hairs on the back, it's like, like an alien version. And you know, everything in nature got a reason. So there is a reason that there are hairs on the back. Maybe it's the, that they resist the, can resist the water that's falling or whatever, but nature always do something for a reason. And normally is to get pollenized. Here this very tiny orchid, Ascocentrum pusillum, botanical variety. Beautiful, but only for collectors. And I was a collector at that moment, so I love it. Miltonia spectabilis, very nice one. Only got one flower, so it's too little. What do you think of this? It's like this 
orchids are like dancing in the wind and that attract insects. They fly in, keep over, keep uh, falling in the back and the flower is pollenized. That's the reason they do like that. That's why I say everything got a reason in nature. I'll take you further into the, the jungle. Got Laia Skinnery, for example. But then, my friends, then it happened. I saw Vanda for the first time in my life. And I fell completely in love. For me, Vanda was the most spectacular orchid I ever seen. And I saw Vanda Magic Blue at that time. And in a split of a second, I decided I want to grow Vandas. So I went home, threw away some of my daddy's roses, and started with Vanda. I got 1,000 plants to start with, and there, Anko Pure Vanda was beginning. So now you know how it began, and next week I'll tell you what went on. Bye.